This is Fred Beck from Fred Joyce Fighting, proudly sponsored by Air Up. I'm joined over Zoom by BJ Flores. BJ, it's good to see you again, mate. How are you? Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I'm good. I'm in Scottsdale, Arizona. I've got a big uh, big week coming up and uh, doing a little bit of traveling. headed to Florida, but everything's good. Well, what do you got coming up this week, which is so big? Mm, I've got a, there's a BKFC fight in uh, Orlando this weekend for the Mr. Olympia. Um, my fighter, 205-pound uh, world champion, Lorenzo Hunt, is going to be doing a training seminar out there for that. Um, I'm going to be meeting Jake Boswick out there. Uh, we've got some stuff coming up for him. We'll be announcing pretty soon. And uh, i got a couple of things the week, the, the week after that. So um, just a lot of good stuff coming up. Uh, I, I can't really announce all of it yet, but it'll it'll come out pretty soon. Now, the last time I spoke to you was post-fight after KSI's fight against Tommy Fury. We did a little mm -hmm. interview on my, on my iPhone back then. Um, just re re reflecting since the flight, do you think there'll be any chance of it being overturned? I mean, I don't think so. It doesn't seem like there was any um, inaccuracies from the from the judges' cards as far as, like, there's a lot of consistency in which rounds they gave which fighter, and I just don't see how it would be overturned. But, um, you know, nothing's impossible, I guess. I just um, – I've seen a lot worse decisions than that. I thought it was a really competitive, close fight. I could see both sides' argument, of course, why they think their fighter won, but that's boxing, unfortunately. And you don't always get – it doesn't always go your way. But, um, you know, I thought it was a good effort. I see a lot of people talking about, um, you know – KSI, he only fought in the clinch and he only fought on the inside. That, you know, that's true, but he also, you know, took away what Tommy was able to do on the outside very good, which is land his left jab and land his shot. So you got to give him credit for that. He was able to take those attributes away from Tommy, and I thought he did, did a hell of a job with that. So um, I think Tommy looked back at the tape and feels like it wasn't his best fight and he could have you know, fought a lot better. But, you know, one thing I've always said about Tommy is he's, he's not as good coming forward as he is going backwards. He's very good on his back foot. He's very good when you come to him. And uh, coming forward, he kind of changed his game plan and, and, and got away from himself a little bit. And uh, KSI had a great game plan. So um, I don't think the, the the you know the the appeals should take away that it was a very competitive fight. I think it was a great fight, and people enjoyed it and were were surprised as, as I was myself that KSI performed so well. Obviously, you and Jay was corner back in February in Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. It was like a lifetime ago almost. Who do you think had a more competitive fight against Tommy Fury, KSI or Jake? Oh. Mm -hmm. Styles make fights, so it's not really – you can't say um, – you know, Jake's game plan was to come forward as well. Uh, Jake's game plan was to, you know, back Tommy up and, and make him fight. And I think looking back on that, Jake's probably a little better when he's not coming forward and having to press the action, and Tommy's a little better going back. I, I feel like both guys have different attributes. You know, we're talking today, um, the small council guys, we're all talking about, oh, now that Nganu did that against Fury – and some of the guys, you know, oh, he's going to knock out Wilder and he's going to do all these things like that. You know, you got to look at the attributes of the of, of the fighters and what um, certain fighters have to deal with against other fighters. And it changes the whole dynamics. It, I can't really tell. Um, styles make fights, like I said, and, and who performed better against Tommy. Like, I don't know. Like, you know, Jake knocked him down. Uh, KSI's rounds with 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 Tommy were, were more competitive in the sense that a lot of the rounds were close. There was no outside fighting. It was all in fighting. There's a lot of shots behind the head. So I think a lot of those are tough to score. And, um, you know, I think Jake was, you know, really trying to track him down. And, and KSI was kind of trying to get inside and, and hit him on the inside and make it an inside fight. So different different matchup completely. Mm, yeah, it's fair. I mean, at the start of the, yeah. the question, you said Styles make fights, and I think that's perfect to describe. Yeah. Do you reckon we'll see KSI versus Jake in the summer, though? Do you reckon that's when we'll see it August, <laughs> just like August time? I mean, I hope so. You know, it's a fight everyone wants to see. I think if, if Jake wants it, I know Jake wants it, and – um, I was seeing after some of the interviews that, you know, KSI was saying, I want to take a rest. And I don't, I don't know if he's just saying that to try to, you know, try to build it up more or what. But I think, you know, it's clear whatever the fight everyone wants to see is Jake and KSI. There's no there's no other fight people want to see. Um, you know, of course, there's other good fights out there for other influencers. But for them, that's the fight everyone wants. So I don't think there's any way around it now. Jake's fighting December 15th. He'll make an announcement soon on who he's going to face. Um, and to be honest, I'm not even really sure. I know that they've moved some things around because they've had some different opponent things, things that happened to the opponents. And uh, I don't even know who the opponent's going to be. So a lot of the guys in the small council are like, hey, who's it going to be? And I, I don't know. <laughs> Me and Jake talked on the uh, Francis Ngannou fight uh, whenever Ngannou and Tyson Fury were fighting. We were texting back and forth. I was like, holy hell. I was like, I cannot believe this. And Ngannou looks incredible. And, you know, Jake was like, man, Francis is just so strong. It's it's tough for Tyson to, you know, really get gain leverage in the clinches and Tyson's used to land on guys in the clinches and blah, blah, blah. We had some good conversation. One thing that did not come up was who he's fighting on December 15th. So 
Um, you know, we'll see. But I think that's the fight everybody wants to summon. Do you think you'll be the peacemaker in that? Obviously, you're Mesa Mams, you're Mesa Jake. Do you think you'll be the, <laughs> the in-betweener, the guy in the middle, the guy in no man's land to try and make it happen, get it over the line? Because... <laughs> uh, I don't know if that'll really help out too much. I think both fighters kind of know what they want. And I think it's just going to be a question of weight. You know what I mean? I think it's a question of weight. If they'll do the same weight thing they did with Tommy, the 183, um, or, you know, Jake could come in at 183, I'm sure he'll do it. If they try to get him lower than 183 with the rehydration clause and all that, it's, it gets complicated, you know? So, um, I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, you know, Mams has dealt with me very well. Uh, he's been nothing, but he's done everything he said. He's been a, a gentleman. He's been very, you know, cordial. And obviously Jake, I've got, you know, three and a half, almost four years experience with him. And he's just a great kid and a tough, hard, hardworking young man and done everything he said. So I can't take sides. And, uh, you know, Mams doesn't really tell me anything um negative about jake ever when i'm on the line because he knows kind of how i get so uh you know it's just i think with all due respect we'll see how it works out but i'm i'm not sure if i can great if not i'm I'm not sure we'll see okay i'm sure we'll see mamas might give you a call being like bj <laughs> you need to be a peacemaker here i didn't make it, try and make this thing happen um let's i mean just... i'm happy to do it i think people all over the world will thank me if i can get this fight made um you know I, I think it's a Everyone lot love you. I think it's... <laughs> I think it's a lot more between Mans and Nikisa than it is between me and uh, being a peacemaker. But, um, you know, anywhere I can help, I'm, I'm glad to help because it's a fight everyone wants to see. And, you know, obviously, you know, we want KSI to come back. I thought he performed really well. And uh, I think it makes a lot of sense for him to, you know, to stay in boxing now after a performance like that and not, you know, go right back to the music. But it kind of depends on where his head's at and where he feels. And you got to go from there. So that's that's where it gets complicated, Fred. <laughs> OK, I understand. Yeah. I guess to, to be a fly on the wall and it goes... To be a fly on the wall on those negotiations would be quite, quite interesting <laughs> to say the least. So speaking of the small council, you guys uploaded a video about a week ago and it got taken down in about six hours. Do you know the reason it got taken down and why it hasn't been uploaded yet? No uh, no comment. I can't uh, say anything you're media that. trained, BJ. You got that PR <laughs> training, huh? Yeah, I can't. I can't comment on that at this moment. I don't know. <laughs> so the one you had today, will that be posted on YouTube? Or do you think now they're going to keep them off YouTube? Yeah, well, I don't know. I'm not sure. I think it kind of depends on where, uh, you know, what the content is we're talking about, uh, the things we're talking about. And, you know, certain things are, are better left in private, honestly. Um, with all due respect to everybody, you know, we want everyone to be aware of what's going on. But I think there, there's got to be, a, you know, there's got to be a somewhat of, uh, um, you know, not secrecy, but I mean, there's definitely got to be some um, um, situations where everything doesn't have to go out to the public you know when we're discussing who should fight and rankings and things like that i mean um i think it's uh, a little bit of uh a little bit of privacy is good so um we'll see what happens mm, okay that's interesting um york hall in under three weeks time you got misfits 011 are you gonna be yeah. there you're gonna fly over yeah i think i will i'm looking forward to it i think it's gonna be a good card and uh you know after the last misfits card and then the nashville card i mean we're on to something i mean these cards are great and, uh, you know, they're exciting. They're good. They're good content. And, you know, we're working on the guys uh, becoming, you know, better boxers. We're trying to get the guys with better trainers. We're trying to get the, the guys with good trainers to continue and continue to work because obviously we want to we want the entertaining as the entertainment aspect. But we want these guys to, de to develop and learn how to box. So um, we're stressing that those are things we're looking into. And we also want guys to use their platform for, for good instead of just name calling and things like that. So we're, we're working on a lot of things right now. And uh, it's, uh, it's coming along nicely. Okay, that's good. That's good to be there. Are you also going to be at Jake's fight December 15th? Yeah, I should be. Um, it's uh, every fight he has, is, you know, it's a, it's, a, it's a great event, very entertaining. Um, he's got a lot to prove. He's got a big chip on his shoulder. And uh, I always like to be there to support. So, um, yeah, I plan on being there December 15th. Oh, wow. I see quite a lot of you then in the next few months. That's yeah, nice. man, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of you this summer and the now, so uh, let's let's keep it going. Hear <laughs> <laughs> the interviews coming. Just a few more points before I let you go. When do you expect we're going to hear any news on the York Hall card? Oh, eleven, like fights being announced. Do you reckon next week we'll start hearing some news? Um, I don't know. I think that's kind of in Mams's corner. He's got some things he's working on, and he's got a lot of meetings, and he's trying to put some things together. I think everyone will be very happy about, and uh, we'll kind of see, uh, you know, when that all comes to fruition. When he's comfortable, you know, saying making an announcement but um i think everyone's gonna be very happy that that card's gonna be uh it's gonna be fire it's gonna be very exciting and uh i think the the fans and the people are gonna be ecstatic to hear about some of the matchups we're, we're talking about and who's gonna be on it so um a lot of big a lot of big events everybody's very happy the zone was very happy with the turnout of uh, the misfits card in manchester and uh 
they're ready to get back, get back to the grind and get back into this. So um, we're going to have a lot of big events coming up in the next couple of years. And I'm looking forward to being a part of it. Any surprise fights happening on that card that people might not expect? Um, I mean, again, like I'm not really the one to say uh, when those are I'm more of the, you know, help determine the rankings who I think should fight and all that. I'm not, I'm definitely not the announcement guy. Um, that's one thing I don't really like to do. I like to kind of stay in my, stay in my lane. So uh, I'm going to let those guys handle that. And whenever man's wants to announce it, then I guess that's when he'll announce it. But uh, I'll be at uh, Jake's fight December 15th and I'll see everybody at the uh, bare knuckle event this Friday night in Orlando. Um, we got uh, the redneck Dave Mundell uh, fighting against the kid that I don't really know that well, but uh, the undercard is going to be good. And we got Lorenzo Hunt. He's doing a training and, and bare knuckle seminar Saturday, the following day at the Mr. Olympia event. And uh, I'll be there for that. So everybody go check it out. Okay. And you also did a training seminar with Johnny Fisher. Is that correct? Yeah. Yes, I did. Yeah. And Johnny's been a friend of mine for four years. We did that in Manchester. I had another kid in there named Thane, uh, Thane Wadhams. Um, another kid I pick win, Zach Kirsch, who's been a good friend of mine for a long time. And one other person in there that I can't say, but we had a, we, we had a nice little turnout and it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, those guys got a lot of talent. You know, Johnny, Johnny I've watched develop since he was a, a young heavyweight before he's even professional. And I saw him over there sparring with Joe Joyce in Vegas and, um, you know, with uh, Sam Jones, brought him over there. And I, I met, I got to meet all those guys. Uh, and, and, and Johnny's got a great future ahead of him. And I'm looking forward to watching and see how he does. Yeah, certainly. That was ages ago. I remember that was the beginning of Johnny's career, doing the sparring. Yeah, it was. And now kind of regularly he goes over there. So not too bad on Johnny's side. I'm really happy for him. He's an OG as well for the channel as well into him back in the day just a couple more things tyson fury versus francis and garnu i'm sure everyone would have seen that do you reckon that and garnu hits harder than john wilder in the boxing ring i think i think Ngannou is physically as strong as anybody in, in in any combat sport ever i mean the guy's a freaking nature and uh he's just such a strong awkward man and one thing you got to think about too um tyson fury is fighting usek in december if you're going to fight Usyk in December and you're going to fight Ngannou in October, are you going to go at 35 years of age? Are you going to go all out in the training camp before you fight Alexander Usyk? I don't think Tyson Fury expected Ngannou to be anything like he was, to have the ability or the skill that he had. And I don't feel like that was 100% of Tyson Fury. I mean, full credit to Ngannou. He fought a hell of a fight, and I was shocked how well he performed. But I just don't think Fury at 35 was willing to put in a full camp for Ngannou then turn around and fight Usyk again, I think. He kind of skated in and thought, you know, this will be a good warm-up for Rusek and I'll be able to box him. And I think Ngannou surprised him. With that being said, do I think Ngannou won six rounds? No, I don't. He got the knockdown. He was very competitive, but it definitely wasn't a robbery. I mean, if you, if you score boxing round by round and you give the winner 10 points, the nine points of the loser, or, or eight if there's a knockdown, I still don't think you can cry robbery. I think it was a very competitive fight, a good fight. But, you know, Tyson winning, he's the champion. I, I have no complaints about that. So, but uh, Ngannou, wow. I mean, hell of a performance, and I just think that there's so many good fights for him. I know they're talking about Deontay Wilder now, and Malik Scott's excited about that. I think that's a credit. That's a great fight, and I think uh, Ngannou just threw his name in the sweepstakes. I think I don't know if we should ever see Ngannou back in the cage with how well he's how, how good of a boxer he is. He's incredible, and uh, you got to give that guy a lot of credit. He deserves some big fights, and um, you know I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing it. But that doesn't mean he's going to go out there and beat Anthony Joshua and beat Deontay Wilder. That doesn't mean that it's a different style. But he he put on a hell of a show. Do you think Ngannou did enough to win? Mm -mm. I don't think he did enough to win, but I think, you know, there's a saying, Fred, you know, you might have lost the battle, but he won the war, and I feel like that's what Ngannou did. Um, even though he didn't win the fight, he opened up so many eyes, and he did, you know, perform so well in there that everybody wants to see him fight again. And he had Mike Tyson in his corner, and it was just, it was great. So I just thought, you know, it was a very competitive fight. I think if Ngannou was the champion, and then Ngannou was, you know, I still think there was a lot of rounds that he was that weren't one sided enough for Ngannou. Um, a lot of rounds were very close. You could end up giving him, but not not one sided enough. I feel like Fury controlled the early rounds and then you know got around and Ngannou got around. Fury got around after that, but I just feel like it, it wasn't enough to say oh Ngannou won. It definitely wasn't a robbery. I don't care what it, what you say, but it was just a very competitive fight, very entertaining fight. I think everyone got their money's worth. Do you still pick Fury as a favorite to beat you sick after watching that on Saturday? I mean, it's style. It's it's a style matchup. So, um, you know, just because just because Ngannou um, was able to get to get the Fury, that doesn't mean Usyk will at all. I mean, Usyk is a completely different type of fighter and completely different challenger. So, um, I like. I, I mean, I like Fury against anybody in 100% uh, training camp when he's coming in fully prepared. But um, like I said, 
Uh, you can't take anything away from Agano. He just put on such a hell of a performance and boxed so well. But I still got Fury over Usyk. Mm, okay, okay, that's interesting. Yeah. That would definitely be a very big fight. I suppose it will happen in Saudi Arabia. That's where the money seems to be. Just a few more things. Um, Jake Boswick. Do you think early next year we'll see him on Misfits? I'm a big fan of Jake. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, I would love to. I would love to. You know, get that something in that and like nailed down for Jake Boswick. He's been training all year. He's hungry. He might have a little exhibition um, in December. A little something coming up that I can't announce yet, but uh, December, middle of December, he'll have a little exhibition um, doing boxing, uh, getting ready for some uh, some some potential events for next year. But I'd love to see him in the cage, too. Uh, he's got a lot of uh, great ability and a lot of fans out there. So, um, you know, we'll see how it goes. But, um, you know, obviously with, with the big event two weeks ago, it's kind of tough to, oh, hey, ma'am, by the way, uh, you know, take Bostrick, let's get him in. So give it a little time to breathe, and then uh, things will work out the right way. But I think uh, – He'll, he'll be back in the ring very soon, probably December 16th, and then again in February or March. Okay, nice, nice. I kind of have a warm up, not warm up, but kind of make sure you stay sharp in the December fight and then get him on Misfits in the March time. So, the pro tournament, do you reckon he'll be on that? Is that most likely for him? I hope so. I mean, we've talked about it, and I think he's got the green light already to be on it. Just it's kind of nailing down when that pro tournament's going to be. So, um, as soon as the date we get that nailed down, he's ready 100%. He's ready to rock and roll. He can't wait to get in there. So he's uh, looking forward to being in there with some of those big name guys. And I think it's going to be a great opportunity for him to prove, uh, uh, you know, how he is as a fighter. And a lot of people will be uh, very pleasantly surprised. I like Jake. I interviewed him ages ago on the channel. I think I like 600 yeah. times then. Um, yeah. And so he's an, he's an OG. I always got, always got faith in Jake. Um, just he's great. One, one thing before I let you go. Do you reckon we'll ever see a return from you, though, in the ring? I know you always get the itch. Do you reckon, BJ? No, I don't think so. I mean, I guess unless, you know, someone like uh, John Fury where it made sense or something like that, I think that's kind of, you know, I don't I don't really want to, I don't really feel any any desire to go out there and box anybody or do anything like that. Um, I'm very content and happy where I'm at. If it, there's the right opportunity that made the right, made the right sense or whatever with someone who's retired, he used to be a professional boxer. I mean, it wouldn't make sense with me with an influence or anything like that, but you know, something like that, if it made sense and it was the right timing and everything, then maybe, but I I don't really have any, uh, I don't wake up at night wishing I was still in the ring at all. I'm at a different phase of my life and I'm very happy. Yeah, that's fair enough. Until Mamma's phone yeah. saying, come on, we need your misfits, quick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, no. we could talk about it, but I mean, I don't, I don't know if that really makes sense for me right now, you know, but I mean, I guess nothing's impossible, so I'm not going to rule anything out. Is there any chance we see Big John Fury or misfits? I mean, he's kind of perfect for it. All the trash talk and hype. Yeah, I think Big John Fury. Mm -hmm. No, I mean he's great. He's great. He's a uh, you know we saw him obviously in Saudi for the uh, when he when they fought Jake and he's very entertaining and you know he's a passionate guy. You got to respect that. He's passionate about his kids and he he uh, he really he's really a part of their life. And you know you can look at it. You can say, oh man, he's a little overboard. But at the same time, he brings a lot of great attention to the to the kids and Tommy and you know Tommy's not a big talker and Tommy. Tommy's gotten very good at talking, though. I will say that with the Jake fight and with the KSI fight, he was very good. He got He's very witty. He's very sharp. But, you know, John gets some good stuff in there, and people are entertained by John. So I'm having a, I'm having a good time with it. I think he adds a lot to the shows. And he knows how to be professional, but then he also knows how to, like, soup it up when he wants to. And uh, I, think, I think it's a great team, the whole Fury clan. It's just good. Um, you know, they all kind of travel together and, and support each other. I saw Tommy walk out with uh, Tyson and, you know, this is that brotherly bond. I, I love seeing that. And John's right there in the middle of it. I mean, imagine like Deion Sanders, um, you know, with his two kids, with Shador and with Shiloh. Every single Saturday, he gets to go out and play and coach his two sons in football every single Saturday. And that's very similar to what John Fury's doing. He gets to go out there in the corner with with uh, Tyson and with Tommy. And it's a close-knit group. And it's just, uh, you know, it's all, all you could ever ask for as a man. Certainly. is very entertaining. I did kind yeah, of oh, yeah. just head buffing and punching the glass. In between KSI and Tommy, I didn't think, wow, <laughs> it is close to breaking. And I remember seeing the move at the end, and I'm thinking, when they were kind of packing the foot down, I remember thinking, he was pretty close. It was only a few punches <laughs> off before it went, but I know that's another story for another time. But BJ, he's a, he's, a pa he's a passionate guy. He loves it, man. He's really, he's really, he's really ready to jump in there. And, you know, it's a little much sometimes, but I mean, look, it's a, it's, it's very entertaining, and uh, I can't fault him for it. He's doing a hell of a job. <laughs> Certainly doing a hell of a job, indeed. Awesome. That's a wrap, then, BJ. Thanks so cool. much for your time. I'll see you in your. All right, guys. That's your first Thank time. Thank you so much. Walk, but I do appreciate it, and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much. All right, Fred. Thanks, buddy. See you.